let's go. Good morning, everyone. Here we have the Skoda, Skoda Enyaq 85. It's the new version of the Enyaq with the new motor, the same motor that my ID7 Hank has, the APP 550. So we have 210 kilowatt, 286 horsepower, 545 newton meters of torque. And I'm going to do a little range test with it because this motor is supposed to be more efficient. Um, I'm also going to do a little test against an old Enyaq next week, next Sunday. Very excited about that. Then we see how uh, uh, the efficiency is really when we test it to a different car. Uh, this has the 77 kilowatt hour batteries or 82, 77 can be used, but I'm guessing it's the same as in my ID7 that where I can only use 74 kilowatt hours. I'm charging now to 100%. Then we're going to do a, a nice little range test at 110 kilometers per hour because not everyone in Europe is driving 130. By the way, kudos to Ionity, they finally fixed the screens. Two of those chargers, the screen didn't work. Now they're all back. Yay! I'm on my way. I'm driving 113 on the speedometer, which is 110 GPS speed. As usual, I started at 100%. <clears throat> my data so far, driving 31 kilometers, I'm at 91%. You can see that here. You can see wonderful how different the software is for on Skoda than it is on my ID7 and we have a lot of buttons we have a still the assist mode park climate you cannot get into the climate with uh, uh, in the in inf infotainment system you have to press here and you cannot also cannot cast I couldn't customize those buttons underneath here but I can customize the buttons up there um, I also noticed the screen is the same size as it was in my ID3 and uh, it will be the same as ID4, ID5 here uh, in the cockpit. And if you want to adjust the view, you use the buttons here, come on, focus. And then it, you can adjust this and if you want to adjust the head-up display, you can do that too. But then you have to press the button here and move it and it will tell you hey you can now adjust the head-up display and now when I use the buttons I adjust the head-up display and then we can do this back and it says you know adjusting you can now operate the instrument cluster Woo. I have the heat on 23 degrees fan speed I think 3 yes uh, to the feet and to the window and I have the seat heating on too. How is the Enyaq to drive on the highway in a long distance trip? I mean, I'm driving 110 now. Later, we're going to drive 130. We're going to see then how it is. At 110, it's extremely quiet. It's very comfortable. I have the DCC in here, by the way. I saw that in individual. Oh, I have to do it here. Here you can just switch, here you can adjust. I have up here the DCC dynamic chassis control. I have it on comfort. Very nice. I like that I still have the consumption number trip data in my cockpit. I like that head-up display has the same information as in my ID7, but it's stretched. I can see that it's the, the, the numbers and everything, uh, the, the, the stuff underneath, not the augmented reality part, is a bit stretched. And of course, I have to get used to it. It looks weird. <laughs> um, it's whoa, what's happening here? 
Um, in the beginning I was, this is not sharp, something's happening, but it's fine. Um, yeah, seats are good, not ID7 comfortable, I don't have massage function in here, but it's fine. I have seat heating, I have my uh, heating control and seat heater here, and if I need the climate, I need a button. I can live with that. The infotainment system is fine. Um, I looked through and you can have different layouts, but not great layouts. So I would have, but again, I'm coming from my ID7. I'm used to a bit more screen <laughs> and then I can put more stuff in here. So uh, there's only this size, this size, and then this and the small one so four different sizes and for example here when i have the map i cannot have the map on the left there's no i didn't find a, a setting for that so if i want it in big um, but it's fine it's just something you have to get used to I, I played around with it it's good i have the app connected app looks good um i, I like the the space for the phone um it, it looks the same as the ENIAC. You have the same cruise control here on the side where you press on the side for set. So the, the cruise control is on and then up and down is 10 kilometers an hour, more or less. And when you press the set, it's minus one. And if you push it towards you, it's plus one kilometers an hour. And the distance is, is on top. That's nice that then the steering wheel is a bit open you have your music control volume voice controls uh, steering wheel heater here and then here like i showed you before to switch the cockpit or the head-up display and then up here you can switch travel assist or just adaptive cruise control or speed limiter I'm at 75%, drove 92 kilometers, it just switched to 93. That would mean a full range of 368 kilometers. Average consumption right now is 204 watt hours per kilometer. Uh, average speed, uh, speed, speed 107. Drive has been amazing so far. I had to pass two, three times and had to drive a bit faster. Other than that, it's uh, nice. It got a bit warmer when we started. It was five degrees. Now we are at seven. I'm at 50%, I drove 182 kilometers, that would mean 364 kilometers of range. Uh, average consumption went a bit up, 207 watt hours per kilometer. Average speed is also up. Uh, I've noticed a few things. Number one, you can change those three buttons here, but it's a different way than up here. Here you press and then select what you want there. Uh, down here, you have to move this thing down so it is uh, then this button and then you have to press ok and the other thing is um, so travel assist that notices your touch for the self steering it needs way more pressing and on a special not here it's more here it needs that so it recognizes the touch in my id7 i can just do this and it's fine here i have to press a bit harder and it seems to be it has to be more on this side and sometimes i even had it that, that i get the red warning and then i'm pressing and pressing and steering and steering and it says sos and warning and i would ah! It's uh, stressful, <laughs> so it needs way more touch for to be recognized. I noticed that. Also is important, the same as in my ID7, the range display says 209 kilometers. I drove with over 50%, 188, so it will be less. It will be 100 in 
85 kilometers of range so 24 kilometers less than what the car shows that's a bit sad and the consumption is tiny bit different but not too much it's even higher than it was before so it, it, it adapts to the to your consumption slowly and I would love it would do that better I have the same in my ID7 I'm at 30%, I turned around and navigated to the Georgia, 62 kilometers and it also tells me at what state of charge I will arrive, where are we, with 14%, that hasn't changed by the way since I put the charger in. I'm navigating to Ionity but I turned off the preheating of the battery. Battery is not perfect temperature for charging but it's fine um, if you want to see my data that's like this on the way back usually it's less consumption it's also warmer we have nine degrees outside and it's sunny I turn down the heat to 22 degrees This video is supported by Tronity, a must-have for every Volkswagen, Tesla or Ford owner, but also for other brands. With the app or in the browser, you can have an overview of all your monthly costs, your charging sessions and all of your trips. And there's also a 100% tax compliant driver's logbook. My viewers get 25% off if they use the link in the description below or if they use the code battery life when they register with the app. I arrived with 13%, average consumption was 202, drove 326 kilometers. If you want to follow me on Instagram, BetteryRife1, and if you want to support the channel, you can do that via Patreon. There's a link in the description below, and you can do it here on YouTube via channel membership. I appreciate it very much. Can't see you, it's so sunny. Yes, so with that 87% uh, that I used and driving these kilometers, I get to a range of 373 kilometers. I put all the data in here, tire size, it's 20 inch tires, my heat, the temperature, and all of this, so you can see average speed, calculated the real kilometers all of this stuff it was a real comfortable drive in the morning it was still cold now it's warm I'm gonna do 130 kilometers now range test now it will be better because it's 10 degrees and sunny I will use less heat and of course consumption going through the air at a higher temperature is also better that's all for today um, check out the 130 kilometers an hour range test that's it for me thank you very much for watching have a great day and take care bye